Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Noah Kelman and as always I'm here to show you everything that I know about playing modern jazz piano. So today we're going to be talking about how we can add inner motion and just in general take our solo piano playing to the next level. There's some really great techniques that you can implement really quickly right away and immediately sound a lot more professional. Really quick, if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe and turning on notifications with the little bell. And also, if you're someone who wants some one-on-one -on -one guidance, click the link in the description to set up a totally free call with myself or one of my team members, and we'll see if working together would be a good fit, and if there's any just advice that we can give you. All right, without any further ado, let's dive right into the video. So just to get started here, one of the first things we want to talk about is something called the three-hand piano technique. Now, I believe this was originally popularized by the great pianist and educator Fred Hirsch, but I'm not 100% sure. So if you all happen to know the answer there, please let me know in the comments. I would love to get your feedback on that. But the three-hand piano technique is something, you know, really, really important to solo piano playing in general. So essentially, this is the concept. The pinky of your left hand, or maybe the pinky and fourth finger, kind of serve as the bass player, right? And then the fourth finger and pinky of your right hand become kind of the melody players, leaving these six fingers on the inside, right, the inside of our, our chords to really um, fill out the chords. And in this case, we're gonna talk about how we can use them to create some inner motion. So let's just take a really simple start to a song, 5-1. We can do it in E flat, right? So let's say that our melody looks like this. Right? So I'm gonna use either just these top two fingers, maybe the top three fingers, right? Okay. And so that's still leaving space here, so. Keeping it really, really simple to start, not much motion or anything. Now, normally I would probably add some more stuff in here. So obviously here, we're just working with five, one, right? Really, really simple and a very basic melody. So the bass player here is just going, start pinky, right? That's really all we need here, it's just the pinky. So that's what we've got. So one of the first things we can do to create some inner motion is fill in this five, one with some changing extensions, right? Or kind of a chord in between. So right now we're just doing B flat 13. What if we throw something in the middle here? Okay, so we kind of have this motion. So what we're doing here is we're going from B flat 13 to B flat seven, flat nine, sharp 11, right? And then resolve into the E flat. So that gives us a little bit more motion, but I almost feel like there's more we could be doing here, right? So we're still just playing chords in blocks. And that's a really common thing that, you know, we might do when we're first learning a tune or even when we're just kind of starting out as jazz pianists, we just learn a melody and play the chords underneath. But you know, a seasoned pro might do something a little bit more like this. Right, and that's some really, really nice inner motion in there. Now, honestly, you guys could probably find some even better options, but let's just kind of talk about what I was doing there. So first of all, obviously we did our B flat 13 to our B flat uh, seven flat nine sharp 11, but then we actually also added in this voicing right here before the E flat major. So this right here is, I'll just spell the voicing out so you guys can steal it. One, five, uh, three, flat seven, nine, uh, sharp 11, so an E9 with a sharp 11. And then here to this nice little E flat major seven. So, so it's nice motion, right? So adding in some more chords in between just kind of gives us some more places for our, you know, bass player to go, some different um, unexpected sounds for the ear. And what I'm doing is actually very, very simple here. So this is a really, really simple little kind of reharmonization that you can do. It's just a tritone sub, right? To one. So just a half step above dominant landing on the one. You can add that almost anywhere in a jazz standard and it's gonna work great. Another great little substitution would actually be the altered chord, a half step below the one. So that would be. 
So that's an interesting one too. Maybe, let's see if we can land this well. Um, yeah, so that's nice. I'm into it. Yeah, so that's, that's another nice one right there. But the real point here is by adding in these little half step movements, it just gives us more places to go and therefore we can start to build some more inner motion. So you might have heard me do a really nice little uh, inner motion classic jazz piano cliche here. I love this one. So what we're doing is we're going to a sharp five. It's almost like we're playing G over E flat, right? And then we can resolve. So that's really, really nice. And so check it out. Bass player, melody player on top. And with these, these fingers on the inside are doing their own thing. So how can we create more of this? Well, we can work on rolling our chords. actually a lot simpler than it looks, right? So I'm just doing some rolling up. Then moving the fingers around the inside. Could do some rolling down. Right, so by doing these rolls, we can actually create motion, especially if we kind of keep it in time. So you don't have to roll just the full chord from bottom to top. You can roll both hands at once. <laughs> All right, so I hope you got some really, really great tips for solo piano there. I would love to hear about how you all try this stuff out. So let me know in the comments how you do with this. But just to tie this together, take a ballad, try you know getting some nice little substitutions in there first, work those out first, um, and then see if you can create some inner motion by putting it all together. Maybe even take a tune that you already know really well and start trying to roll the chords, move things around in the middle. I think you're gonna have a really nice time with this and it will take your playing to the next level. And it's actually so much simpler than it seems. So anyway, I hope you got a lot out of this lesson. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button for me. Um, that really helps me out. And again, if you just wanna have a conversation about the best next steps for you personally in your piano journey, feel free to click the link in the description to set up a call. It's gonna be either with myself or someone on my team, and we'll help you figure out the best next steps, and maybe even if working together would make sense. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.